I'm bored, so I... Uh, I've never seen that kid here before besides today. Mike Helmer has been spending quite a bit of time... Do this up. ...at Onondaga Lake Park Skate Park lately. Uh, Not by choice, though. Watch out. You see, the United team isn't allowed to skate in his own city. A local law prevents it. Can't skate anywhere in Oneida unless it's on private property. Mike and his brother were actually ticketed a few days ago for violating the ordinance. I'm I'm shocked. If you think they're mad, wait until you meet their mom. It's been incredibly frustrating for myself and the other parents because we have to drive these kids all over the place because they're only 14 and 15 years old. They don't have a license. Jill says she and other parents can't afford to keep lugging their kids around central New York. They're hoping this petition they started will get counselors to move forward with Oneida's proposed skate park. Like I said there's 65 people on here that work and live and eat in this town. It's been on the council's agenda a number of times, but for one reason or another, it's always hit bumps in the road. The city is hoping to put its new skate park in this vacant building behind me off of Lenox Ave. The project has sort of been put on hold, though, as the building's owner continues to search for a new insurance policy. Counselors are going to discuss it again on July 15th. If everything is good to go then, the skate park could be up and running by the end of the month. Unfortunately, um, you know, whenever you do something like this, you're going to upset some people and you're going to make other people happy. It's kind of, it's, it's, you know, it's a mixed bag, but we're, we're getting there. Matt, are you going to go? As far as Mike and his friends go, they're just hoping it happens sooner rather than later. Go. In Oneida, Kevin Torres, News Channel 9. Tonight, News Channel 9's Kevin Torres is live at Salem High School where Tony Nguyen was a well-liked student. Kevin. Well, Rod, ask anyone who knew him and they'll tell you that Tony was just an all-around great kid. His principal and teachers had a special bond with him, like they did with many students, but Tony was more than just a student. He was like their child. It's one of those days and times that'll just, just stay in, in my mind. The final chapter of Tony Guyen's story ended so unexpectedly. Tony meant a lot to all of us. Especially when you look back on his remarkable life. Tony was a child that everyone knew, and he was a joy, his smile, his ability to help. He was one of the most kind-hearted children I've taught in a long time. There wasn't a mean bone in his body. I'm going to miss him. I see him every day. I saw him every day. He was quiet, but warm inside. I mean, I can just see his face and his glasses kind of, kind of hung over. Um, he was very proud of his Vietnamese heritage and was always very happy to get to talk about that. This past year we had quite a conversation about the history of Vietnam and he really knew a lot about the history of that country and it amazed me and you know that's the kind of person he was and he would always go out of his way to say, how's it going Dr. Thiel, are you having a good day today? And but it's very hard to imagine that it's ended so quickly in such an unexpected way. Having Tony depart without really a chance to say goodbye is hard on all, all of us. It's very hard on all of us. It's going to be very hard for a lot of people, especially Tony's friends. And once school is back in session, grief counselors will likely be on hand to help them cope with all this. Uh, some of you may have heard from our earlier broadcast that Tony had a history of, uh, of, uh, of health problems. And one of his teachers told me tonight at the end of our interview that at least he's up there, up there where he doesn't have to deal with the pain anymore. Rob, back to you. Hi, what's the name? Mike Price is the kind of guy... How do you spell Mary Lou, M -A? ...who will remember a face... I'm old, you have to do this slowly for me. What is it again? ...but struggle with the name. How do you do, know, Mike? How you doing? Now that one I know how to spell. That's no problem. That's easy... It's what happens when you meet thousands of people... Back when I was 14 years old, I was on dance party. ...during a career that spans 46 years. Yeah, that's been a long time, that's right. Thank you, Richard. This afternoon, his family, friends... I was going to bring your high school picture down here, but... Uh, ...and fans... He was always very personal, even yeah. in person or on TV. Yeah. He was always so courteous and everything. Gathered at Onondaga Lake Park from as far away as the southern tier. Two and a half hours from Oneana, New York. To congratulate him on his retirement. He's still a hero to me. Well, thank you. <laughs> Most of them grew up watching him as the Baron. Next, some still have his record. Forty, you paid? Yeah, I did. I paid about 50 cents when I got this at <laughs> WT Grants. Wow. <laughs> For others, Mike is the good news guy. 
that special person who would cheer you up on days clouded with bad news. He was very classy when he did a lot of things and yeah. always helping kids. He was he was great. Mike wasn't your typical reporter. He was a storyteller. And hi, I'm Mike. How do you do? Sharing with us those slice of life pieces about the young and young at heart. I haven't grown up yet. Just the way he'd want his story told. Okay, I'm Mike, not Mr. Price. Oh, oh. <laughs> Head on a Daga Lake Park. Kevin Torres, News Channel 9. You get out here and there's a you know there's a lot of lot of open fields, a lot of open space. The backbone of Kiwi County is blanketed with miles of farmland. You're out in that field every morning. And endless fields flooded with soybeans and corn. It's always it's it's always muddy out here in the spring, you know. There's it's the sort of place where you'll find folks like Ed Primrose. Yeah, it's always quiet out here. A farmer who reaps out a living right in his own backyard. Just the way it is. Ed shares this farm with his family and 700 cows. These are beef cows. They're his main source of income. About every farm has a mix. Ed also grows plenty of corn. He sells some of it and keeps the rest for himself. You know, I have a fairly significant need for my cattle production. The Department of Agriculture says most farmers will plant 8% less corn this year than they did the year before, which means the price of the yellow vegetable will likely go up. There's a lot of things affecting, affecting the price. Ed says most farmers are growing soybeans instead because they can get about 7 bucks more per bushel. In the Midwest, their corn yields will be, will be higher per acre, but their soybeans will not be significantly higher. You know, we can compete better on soybeans here in New York than on corn in general. If you're looking to blame anything, Ed says you can point your finger at sky-high energy prices. It simply costs too much to grow, transfer, and produce the product. That's a significant increase. Now, 11 non-stop minutes of news. Good evening, everyone. I'm Rod Wood. Here's what's going on tonight. The upstate New York Power Corporation is looking to install hundreds of single-line poles through 36 miles of farmland in Oswego County. And tonight, an attorney from the company met with landowners and discussed the project. News Channel 9's Kevin Torres tells us why some folks are less than thrilled with all this. Well, I can show you a completed unit here in a couple minutes. At Grindstone Farm in Pulaski. It's nice having the country, it's nice having space. Owner Dick DeGraff and his son Lucas. They're actually building a... Are staying busy by piecing together a root washer. For washing organic vegetables. They've owned this farm since 1981. It's where they work. I'll be able to survive. The property includes a few acres of land and two unsightly transmission lines. It was almost the deciding factor of, of buying it or not buying it, so... Dick is still waiting to hear whether upstate New York Power will ask him if he can place some new poles in his land. Some of his neighbors have already received the call. I'm sure some people are strongly opposed to it. I'm sure some people are saying, well, hey, send me the money and I'm going to leave anyway. Inside the Pulaski Courthouse tonight, Dick and his neighbors heard from an attorney representing the power company. He told them how it wants to install 77 wind turbines on Galoo Island, just 12 miles off the shoreline of Sackett's Harbor. The energy would be transferred from single pole lines that would straddle along 36 miles of Route 81 from Houndsfield to Parrish. Dick's neighbor, Nancy Forbes, is against it. If they come through our property, they're going to cut our farm right in two. And, it, and uh, it's going to... Lose valuation. Dick is concerned about a decrease in property value too, so he's going to continue to wait. Wait to see whether he's chosen or looked over. And we just we just deal with it. Never have been sick of that noise ever. <laughs> Harry Kamrowski doesn't get sick of a lot of things. I can't help but smile even on a rainy day. Especially when it involves maple syrup. Nicest bucket in the uh, sugar bush. Not too far from his home along Tater Road in Plainville. Practically in my own backyard. It's a little half mile trip. Is his sanctuary the sugar bush. Now, these are called sap ladders and they enable me to draw sap up over the top of the tractor road. There are more than 500 taps scattered across his 12 acres of land. It's just such a relaxing thing to be uh, with the trees. It's here where Harry has produced delicious blends since 1975. Along the way, he's developed a sweet tooth for it, too. My, I have more than a sweet tooth. <laughs> I have a mouthful of them. <laughs> but that sweet tooth comes with a hefty price tag now. Kings and queens can't buy a better flavor than pure maple. 
What once was only 12 bucks a gallon now costs more than $40. Oh, how things have changed. Uh, we're going to have to uh, put pencil to paper to see whether we've done the right thing or not. What's even more amazing is the amount of money Harry has to pay to create the syrup. He uses fuel to heat it up. Last year, he paid $2.20 per gallon. This year, he's paying more than four. That's a 76% increase. <laughs> never ever thought we'd see these kind of prices it's uh it's just amazing so while he deals with higher fuel prices harry says he's going to try and keep the sweet stuff low so everyone can enjoy it. it's still uh, an enjoyable thing in plainville kevin torres news channel 9